Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to Shift. This is session one. Thank you so much for joining us today. I am excited. I hope you brought your hunger for the word because we are going to dig in in just a minute. Uh, first, I'm going to tell you really quick how this is going to go just so you know what to expect. The format is that we look at today's truth, which is that we reflect what we behold. And secondly, we're going to break it down. We're going to look in the Word, we're going to use illustrations, or we're going to find ways to make it more understandable to us in the 21st century. Then we're going to walk it out. We're going to talk about practical action steps that you can take in your everyday life so that you can apply the Word and the truth that you're learning and see change in your life. And that's the goal is for us to grow spiritually, is for us to develop those spiritual muscles to feed our faith and to encourage each other in the Lord. And hopefully if you're in a group setting right now, that's what you'll be doing today. So this series actually launches from the Father's House series, Face to Face, taught by Pastor Ryan. Um, the first scripture that he got into was in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, and this is in verses 12 to 18. We're going to be looking at that scripture, and then from that point, looking at how we behold the glory of, gl the glory of God and reflect that glory back out to the world around us. We are then going to jump into several weeks of beholding some things together collectively. As a group, as a church, we're going to behold the glory of the Lord, His compassion, His grace, His the fact that He's slow to anger, endlessly patient, we can all work on that, um, loyal, loving kindness, faithfulness, so we're going to get into all of that in the weeks to come, just to let you know what's coming down the pike. So we're going to start today with 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verses 12 to 18. If you have your Bible, you can bring that out or I will put the scripture on the screen for you and you can read along as I read it. So here we go. Since we have such a hope, we are very bold, not like Moses who would put a veil over his face so that the Israelites might not gaze at the outcome of what was being brought to an end. But their minds were hardened. For to this day, when they read the Old Covenant, the same veil remains unlifted because only through Christ is it taken away. Yes, to this day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their hearts. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another, for this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Amen. So if you are not too familiar with the Word of God, then everything I just read may sound absolutely foreign to you and you have no idea what it means. And that's okay because <laughs> that's why we are here. So in this, this New Testament, what we call the New Testament of Scripture, there are several letters that Paul wrote to the churches that he established who were learning how to follow the way of Jesus. And so he had to explain some things to them. Sometimes he had to correct them, bring different kinds of instruction, and they were kind of feeling their way out on how to follow Christ. And so these letters... Um, in the canon of scripture, they give us instruction, they give us correction, they help us to understand what's going on in the whole big picture story of the Bible. So Paul, he is really talking about two covenants here. He's talking about the old covenant and he's talking about the new covenant. A covenant is just an agreement. Um, there was an agreement for the way that God dealt with humankind when he dealt with the nation of Israel. And then there's an agreement after Jesus went to the cross. This is called the new covenant. So let's break it down with this graphic. It'll be a little bit easier to understand. Okay, first let's look at the old covenant. This is the former agreement. It was between God and Israel. It was entered into at Mount Sinai. The covenant was based on keeping the Ten Commandments or the law. It was given to Moses as the mediator between God and his people. The other one Paul is talking about is the new covenant or the new agreement between God and humanity. It was entered into for us at salvation with the shedding of Jesus' blood. 
This covenant is based on faith in Christ, and Jesus is now the mediator between God and his people. So a little context in this passage, Paul is talking about a time when Moses was up on Mount Sinai. He was receiving the Ten Commandments from God. He was with him face to face. He was beholding his glory and the glory shone off his face to such a degree that when he came down off that mountain, he had to put a literal veil over his face. He was actually kind of scaring the people that were around him. You can check that out in Exodus 34, 29 to 35, if you want to look at it later. But he had to put a literal veil over his face because he was shining the glory of the Lord so much after being face to face with him. Then Paul goes on, though, in this passage to talk about a metaphorical veil. And he was talking about how this spiritual blindness, this hardness of heart was like a veil that covered the minds. It hardened the minds of the Jews who did not believe in Jesus. They were stuck in the dead law and they could not receive the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ because they could not get past that old covenant that they were practicing and that they had learned to keep. Um, for them, they were holding on to it. And Paul is saying this veil has to be removed for them to be able to see the spirit of the Lord, the freedom of this new covenant in Jesus. And they were unable to see it at that time. But for us, he's saying, you know, we, we are very bold because we are able to have faith in Christ. That veil is removed. That spiritual blindness is removed. That hardness of heart is removed. And when that's off, we can come boldly to the throne of grace. We can see God face to face. We can behold his glory. We have the privilege of entering his presence. Amen. So we are able to then reflect to those around us the transformation that's taking place, that we are being changed to his image from glory to glory to glory. And for anyone who's been walking with the Lord a long time, you know that as you are changed to be more and more like God, you get to show greater and greater levels of his goodness, his kindness, the fruits of his spirit manifesting in your life. And so we are changed as we behold this wonderful and good God. So that's Paul's point in this passage, that we can behold the glory of the Lord. And as today's truth says, that we can reflect what we are beholding. So I want to break it down in this next section. We're going to just talk about how this works in our everyday life. All right. So. If it's true that we reflect what we behold, and if it's true that it is even maybe affecting those around us that we have relationship with, our spouse, our children, our coworkers, our friends, then we wanna ask ourselves, what are we consistently looking into? What are we consistently beholding? Because clearly the ideal, as Paul said, is to behold the glory of the Lord. And as we do that, we are like mirrors, okay? So imagine your life is like a mirror. And if this mirror is in front of your face, whatever is coming in is now being reflected back out to the people around you. So if we are in fact reflecting the things that we are constantly looking at, giving our attention to, giving our time to, giving our thoughts to, if we are reflecting that out in our lives to other people, then we really wanna think about what we are beholding, amen? So we can behold the glory of the Lord. How do we do that? Spending time in his word, spending time in his presence, worshiping him, being in church and gathering together and corporately worshiping and getting into the word. We're looking at God. We're meeting him face to face in those moments, giving thanks to him for all the blessings that he's given to you in your life. These are all ways that we can be face to face with God and we can behold him and we can look into his nature and his character. And guess what? As we do that, we are being changed. We are being transformed to look more and more like him. And we begin to reflect that glory out to the everyday people that we interact with. And like I mentioned before, your spouse, your children, your coworkers, your friends, your neighbors, all the people that you encounter. Have you ever just 
been around a person that when they walk into the room, the, they carry the presence of God with them. I mean, you feel the spirit when they're there. They're shining the glory of God in the way that they speak, in the way that they carry themselves, in the way that they talk to people. There's peace that comes with them. There's joy that comes with them. There's grace that comes with them. And that's what can happen in our lives. It's just a matter of what are we beholding. And so just like we can behold God, we can also behold or give our time and attention to other things. What might those things be? Well, there are many things in the world, fear, strife, division, anger, pride, all of these things that manifest in different ways, whether it's through the shows that we watch on TV, the shows that we binge on Netflix, the time we spend engaging with social media, or even being around people or situations that tend to draw our attention to negativity, to strife, gossiping, conflict, all of those things. And so we can look at those things a lot. We can give a lot of our time and attention to those things. As we do that, we're beholding the negativity. We're beholding the strife. We're beholding the gossip. We're beholding ungodly lifestyle. We're beholding all these things and be guaranteed as we absorb these things into our spirit and our mind and our heart, we are going to be reflecting those things in our conversation, in the way we show up for the people in our lives, in the way we love and serve and treat each other or don't love and serve and treat each other in a good way. And so if it's true that we reflect what we behold, then we need to ask ourselves, what are we beholding? What are we giving that time and attention to? And in light of all this, how do we practice beholding the glory of the Lord in different ways in our lives so that we can be transformed, so we can be changed, so we can begin to look more and more like Jesus and move from one degree of glory to the next, to the next, to the next, until people say, man, you just don't even seem like the same person that you used to be. And we can say glory to God because he has changed me. Amen. So in this next session, let's learn how to walk this out. How are we going to get some action on this word that we're hearing today? I'll see you in the next section. In case you missed it, today's truth is that we reflect what we behold. And so now that we are in the section about walking it out, we're going to get down to the nitty gritty and we're going to see how we actually put some action on this so that we can see the big change that we talk about resulting from this simple truth that we are learning today. So the first thing I want you to do is come back here next week, in these next five weeks, really, because we are collectively as a church and as a group um, wherever you are, whoever you're meeting with, we are going to behold the Lord. And what I mean by that is we're going to spend some time. We're going to look at his compassion. We're going to look at his graciousness. We're going to look at the fact that he's slow to anger. Um, we're going to invest our time to look into all these things to behold. And then I believe to be in awe of who God is and how not only we will admire and be in awe of God's compassion, for example, but then how do we start to reflect that in our own lives and be a compassionate people, be a gracious people, be a people who practice loyal love and faithfulness. And if that sounds good to you, then I hope you keep coming back. That's one practical way that you can continue on this path of beholding the glory of God. Next, we're going to practice one thing. Everyone say one thing because I don't want it to be 10 things. I want it to be one thing that we can actually execute. We can actually carry out what we said we're going to do. So we're going to locate one thing in our life that may not be beneficial, may be unhealthy or be having a negative effect on how we treat other people, how we reflect God to the people around us. If there's something that I mentioned earlier that just rang true for you, and there's one thing that you think, you know, I need to decrease the amount of time that I'm giving 
to this unhealthy or negative thing that is influencing me and that is affecting how I show up for people in my life. I'm going to locate that one thing and then I'm just going to ask God for the grace to be able to remove it altogether or to spend less of my time and attention being focused on that thing. Amen. So one thing, that's one practical, easy thing we can do in our lives. Secondly, I have a list of scriptures that I gave in the download for this session, and we are going to find, you can find it from that page or from the Bible, but we are going to find one scripture that talks about God, his attributes, like the fact that he's faithful or trustworthy or that he's a protector. Um, We're going to look at one scripture, write it down, and we're just going to think about it. We're going to think about what it means and what it means for us not only to receive God in that way, but also to reflect that out to other people. So as an example, I've got these scripture verses. Let's say, for example, you choose Psalm 46, 2. God is our refuge and our strength, an ever-present help in distress. So think about that, about God being a safe place place that you can go to, about God being a source of strength for your life, about God being present when you are in distress. And as you meditate on that, as you think about that, as you ponder that throughout the week, not only think about how God is that way, but how you can also be a source of strength for somebody else, how you can be present in their time of distress how you can be a safe place and a refuge for somebody else in your life. So that's the goal, my friends. That's the goal is to not only get this word in us, but to reflect it back out. One area that you're gonna cut out, one scripture to replace it and just to feed more of the spirit and less of the flesh. I hope you enjoyed tonight. I have some conversation starters coming up. After this, you can pause the video, check those out, and be sure to discuss your takeaways from this session. Thank you for investing your time with me tonight or today, and I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye. We hope you enjoyed today's Bible teaching. If you're watching with a friend or a small group, we invite you to talk about your takeaways or use the conversation starters to dig a little deeper. You can also download the lesson notes with the link provided below your video. Thanks again for investing this time into your growth. Until next time, let's keep growing and learning together.